This video is going to provide you a brief walkthrough of the hands-on lab platform that's included with your iClass enrollment. Within each one of the iClass modules, you're going to see three primary elements for learning. We've got our video tile here, we've also got access to your eCourseWare, and access to your module lab. Today we're going to go through accessing that module lab. The labs with iClass are supported by EC Council's CyberQ environment. When you click on this module lab link, you're going to be prompted the very first time to agree to our end user license agreement. We are providing live access to remote machines, so you'll need to go through that EULA, review it, make sure you agree with all of the terms there, and then click agree. We'll only ask you one time and we'll capture your response there. From that point forward, the typical lab launch time for us is about two to two and a half minutes to raise the entire environment where you're going to get remote access to those live virtual machines. So let's jump over to that platform. For the sake of this video, I've already gone through the launch process. You'll notice there's a status bar that'll take you through as those machines get ready. We are automatically provisioning a series of remote VMs in a live data center. There's no simulation here. Uh, this, this element is live access to remote VMs. There is no connection back to your machine when you're using this console. So don't worry about launching attacks or viruses or anything like that inside of the platform as your course of study. It's all going to stay contained within this environment and you're safe to practice and, and even destroy these machines if you want to. Okay, so as we work through this platform, let me go through a couple elements of the console so you can get the most out of your learning experience. What you're looking at in this console right now is a remote view to the CEHV11 Parrot box. Now this is an attack platform that's used in multiple labs that we have. Across the bottom, you'll notice multiple links to different operating systems. As I switch, for instance, to CEHV11 Windows 10, this is the Windows 10 box that you're going to use in your lab experiences. We have the ability to send Control-Alt-Delete commands to this machine, but you might be wondering what's the password to log in. Well, we provide some dynamic information here down the left of this console, for instance, the IP address of this machine, and as you expand system information, you'll be provided with the username and password. This information is dynamic, so if you pay attention as I click over, for instance, into the CHV11 Android machine, you'll notice we've changed the username here to root with a password of Tor. If I go back to Windows 10, you'll notice this is relevant to the box that I'm viewing. So this information does change here on the left. Logging into a box, it's going to behave just like any remote connection to, uh, to a Windows machine. We're going to enter the information that's displayed here on the screen and just show you the basic login process. So it's going to load your welcome screen and take you right to the desktop of that box. Now on the right side, you'll notice we're looking at flags right now. Now I will tell you, this is a pretty exciting element of our labs, um, but I don't recommend starting with flags. We're going to cover that in just a minute. This is kind of step two if you want to challenge yourself. We're actually going to switch over. You'll notice two icons here. There's a flag icon and a document icon. We're going to go to Docs and open our lab guide. This is where you're going to be provided with the step-by-step -step exercises, the scenario, the objective, as well as exercises and tasks or lab tasks that you're going to have to go through to complete this lab. Now, we do provide quite a bit of information here, including screenshots of every step along the way, instructions on individual tools that you're going to need to install, and functions that you're going to do with those tools. Now, understand, we're providing you very detailed guidance of how to go through this lab. We do recommend dual monitors when you're using the lab environment because you can spin the, uh, the lab guide itself off into one screen and operate your CyberQ platform in another. Uh, but if you don't have dual monitors, you can simply tile these based on how you see it fitting your screen. Uh, you can simply you know, drag this over and tile, tile the screen just like, like you would you know, navigating multiple screens on any computer. Um, this console itself, we do allow the ability to expand and collapse the console. So for instance, I've already opened my lab guide. I might want to just get rid of that section of the screen. Um, now I'm looking at system information and the remote virtual machine, or I can cut out the system information too and see a maximized view of that individual desktop. This expand console button does the same thing. So if I re-enable these tabs, I can just simply hit expand console and it'll take me right to a full screen view of that desktop. Now this is key if I'm using tiling. So for instance, if I don't have dual monitors, um, then I'm going to go into you know, the expanded console here. I'll have my lab documentation down the right taking me through all of my steps and tasks and the individual console here on the left. I still have the ability to navigate machines, but I might, I might need to expand a couple of things to see system info along the way. Okay, so as I walk through this lab guide, it's going to take me through all the steps and processes that I need to get through my exercises. We're going to take you through things like installing different tools, you know, in, in installing different elements. Each one of these machines does have a share drive mounted to it that has all of the tools preloaded for you. 
These targets are pre-configured with certain vulnerabilities that you're going to be testing out, but accessing those materials, it's all loaded right into the lab platform for you. Um, so for an instance, in this case, I can go into, I'm in scanning networks right now, so I can go into my scanning network tools. We've got about 34 gigs of tools that are, that are preloaded in this system for you. This is where you're going to go to install these things. Understand you're on a remote virtual environment and you're looking at what's going on inside of that remote virtual environment right now. So if, for instance, I go in and I install a specific application, um, when I run this executable file, it's going to install on this local Windows machine, not the box that you're using as a student. So any installation, any attack that you run is all going to stay contained within this environment. You really don't need to worry about what's going on. Even if you destroy these machines, for instance, you run an attack and it corrupts one of the kernels in the operating system. You'll have the ability to close your lab environment and simply restart it from your iClass portal. As soon as it spins back up, we're going to give you working machines. So don't worry about what goes on in the environment. Outside of moving through your lab experience, you're gonna be able to do whatever you need to in these machines to provide you the best learning experience. And we're always gonna provide you a working environment to launch back into. Okay, so now let's, take, let's, let's talk a little bit about taking your learning to uh, you know, a, a, a slightly more complex level. As I get through those lab guides, now understand you do not have to do this to progress through the course. It's totally optional, but it's a matter of how much you wanna challenge yourself. The lab guide will give you tasks and exercises along the way, and it'll give you step-by-step -step guidance on how to move through the lab experiences. But if you want to look at how to apply that knowledge, we've built in this section called Flags. So Flags is going to operate more like a CTF or a capture the flag mode inside of your learning. As I click on my red flags, I get specific objective-based flags that are presented to me. So in this case, instead of telling you step-by-step -step how to do something, I'm going to ask you to accomplish an objective. So for instance, you'll notice flag one here uh, in, in module three says, perform host discovery using Nmap and find the IP address of the machine hosting goodshopping.com. Now you need to figure out what tools and what techniques you need to do to perform that host discovery instead of, for instance, me telling you open Nmap, use this switch, use this command. You're gonna have to figure out what switch in Nmap, which we, by the way, already taught you in the lab guide, is gonna actually go in and pull the system information from that remote target and show you what's actually being hosted in the environment. As you identify the answer, in this case, it's going to be an IP address. You're gonna enter the IP address and the answer for that flag and click submit. Now, understanding this information is provided in the lab guides, so technically you're gonna have the answer to the flags in this learn mode, um, but the idea is, is to provide you the ability to apply the knowledge you've learned in the labs in the form of flags. If you decide not to do that, you can simply close through the, the entire guide, uh, close the lab environment down, and move on to the next module of learning. But it's a great way to test whether or not you're, you're really capturing the elements that are in the course, that are in the individual lab guides, and looking at individual challenge-based learning if you can answer those flags along the way. All right, one other thing to pay attention to in the platform, just to get familiar with, we do have a timer up here in the top right. Don't let this add too much pressure. You're in a learning mode right now as, a, as an iClass student. Um, we do provide one hour automatic access to the environment every time you launch into a lab. Um, and we will spin the environment down after an hour if you don't confirm the need to add time. But as this clock starts to wind down, you'll have the ability to add time. This is included as a part of your iClass enrollment. Um, and you'll notice it's going to give you an alert. Let's say, for instance, I had five or 10 minutes left and I know I've still got seven or eight steps or maybe I'm working on some of the flags and I just like a little bit more time in learning. If that's the case, just tack on another 30 minutes. You'll notice right now, for the sake of this video, we're about seven minutes into our hour timer. I'm just going to add 30 minutes and you'll notice that clock jump from here, 53 minutes to one hour and 23 minutes. That's added an automatic 30 minutes that we will not spin the environment down until it reaches the end of that timer. You'll have up to two extensions where you can add, you know, 30 minutes each time to make sure you have more time in the environment. But don't worry, even if you run out of time, you can always launch the environment again from, the, from your iClass module. So there's not going to be any limit on how many times you launch into your labs or how you work with them. This just allows us to, to manage resources inside of our data center and make sure that we're able to keep the cost down on the products by not running a whole bunch of virtual machines when people aren't actually using them. So again, you can add time. Just quick summary, you've got your system information here on the left, links to each individual box down the bottom. You've got the actual virtual machine view here in the center, and then you've got your flags and documents off to the right. Don't hesitate to reach out to the iClass support team through your learning process. We're here to support you and make sure that you get the most out of this environment. We hope you enjoy the hands-on elements of iClass 
and good luck with your learning.